This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Canto 6 to Canto 11. Paradiso, Canto 6. After that Constantine the eagle turned, against the course of heaven, which it had followed behind the ancient who Lavinia took. Two hundred years and more the bird of God into the extreme of Europe held itself, near to the mountains whence it issued first. And under shadow of the sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand, and changing thus upon mine own alighted. Caesar I was, and am Justinian, who by the will of primal love I feel took from the laws the useless and redundant. And ere unto the work I was attent, one nature to exist in Christ, not more, believed, and with such faith was I contented. But blessed Agapetus, he who was the supreme pastor to the faith sincere, pointed me out the way by words of his. Him I believed, and what was his assertion I now see clearly, even as thou seest, each contradiction to be false and true. As soon as with the church I moved my feet, God in his grace it pleased with this high task to inspire me, and I gave me wholly to it. And to my Belisarius I commended the arms to which was heaven's right hand so joined, it was a signal that I should propose. Now here to the first question terminates my answer, but the character thereof constrains me to continue with a sequel. In order that thou see with how great reason men move against the sacred sacrosanct, both who appropriate and who oppose it, behold how great a power has made it worthy of reverence, beginning from the hour when Pallas died to give it sovereignty. Thou knowest it made in Alba its abode, three hundred years and upward, till at last the three to three fought for it yet again. Thou knowest what it achieved from Sabine wrong, down to Lucretia's sorrow in seven kings, or coming round about the neighboring nations. Thou knowest what it achieved, borne by the Romans, illustrious against Brennus, against Pyrrhus, against the other princes and confederates, Torquatus thence, and Quinctius, who from locks unkempt was named Deci and Fabi, receive the fame I willingly embalm. It struck to earth the pride of the Arabians, who following Hannibal had passed across the Alpine ridges, Po, from which thou glidest. Beneath it triumphed while they yet were young, Pompey and Scipio, and to the hill, beneath which thou wast born it bitter seemed. Then near unto the time when heaven had willed to bring the whole world to its mood serene, did Caesar by the will of Rome assume it. What it achieved from Var unto the Rhine, Iseri beheld, and Saone beheld the same, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled. What it achieved when it had left Ravenna, and left the Rubicon, was such a flight that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Round toward Spain it wheeled its legions, then toward Durazzo, and Pharsalia smote, that to the Calid Nile was felt the pain. Antandros and the Simios, whence it started, it saw again, and there where Hector lies, and ill for Ptolemy, then roused itself. From thence it came like lightning upon Juba, then wheeled itself again into your west, where the Pompeian clarion it heard. From what it wrought with the next standard-bearer, Brutus and Cassius howl in hell together, and Modena and Perugia dolent were. Still doth the mournful Cleopatra weep, because thereof who fleeing from before it took from the adder sudden and black death. With him it ran even to the Red Sea shore, with him it placed the world in so great peace that unto Janus was his temple closed. But what the standard that has made me speak, achieved before and after should achieve, throughout the mortal realm that lies beneath it, becometh an appearance mean and dim, if in the hand of the third Caesar seen with eye unclouded and affection pure, because the living justice that inspires me granted it, in the hand of him I speak of, the glory of doing vengeance for its wrath. Now here attend to what I answer thee, Later it ran with Titus to do vengeance, upon the vengeance of the ancient sin. And when the tooth of Lombardy had bitten the holy church, then underneath its wings did Charlemagne victorious succor her. Now hast thou power to judge of such as those whom I accuse above and of their crimes, which are the cause of all your miseries. To the public standard one the yellow lilies opposes, the other claims it for a party, so that tis hard to see which sins the most. Let, let the Ghibellines ply their handicraft beneath some other standard, for this ever ill follows he who it and justice parts. 
and let not this new Charles e'er strike it down, he and his gulfs, but let him fear the talons that from a nobler lion stripped the fell. Already oftentimes the sons have wept the father's crime, and let him not believe that God will change his scutcheon for the lilies. This little planet doth adorn itself with the good spirits that have active been, that fame and honor might come after them. And whensoever the desires mount thither, thus deviating must perforce the rays of the true love less vividly mount upward. But in commensuration of our wages, with our desert is portion of our joy, because we see them neither less nor greater. Herein doth living justice sweeten so affection in us that for evermore it cannot warp to any iniquity. Voices diverse make up sweet melodies, so in this life of ours the seats diverse render sweet harmony among these spheres, and in the compass of this present pearl shineth the sheen of Romeo, of whom the grand and beauteous work was ill rewarded. But the Provencals who against him wrought, they have not laugh, and therefore ill goes he, who makes his hurt of the good deeds of others. Four daughters, and each one of them a queen, had Raymond Berenger, and this for him did Romeo, a poor man and a pilgrim. And then the malicious words incited him to summon to a reckoning this just man, who rendered to him seven and five for ten. And he departed poor and stricken in years, and if the world could know the heart he had, in begging bit by bit his livelihood, though much it laud him, it would laud him more. End of Canto 6 Paradiso Canto 7 O sana sanctus du saboth, super lustrans claretate tu felice signis hora malahoth. In this wise to his melody returning, the substance upon which a double light doubles itself was seen by me to sing, and to their dance this and the others moved, and in the manner of swift hurrying sparks veiled themselves from me with a sudden distance. Doubting was I, and saying, Tell her, tell her, within me, tell her, saying, Tell my lady, who slakes my thirst with her sweet effluences, and yet that reverence which doth lord it over the whole of me only by B and I C E bowed me again like unto one who drowses. Short while did Beatrice endure me thus, and she began lighting me with a smile such as would make one happy in the fire. According to infallible advisement, after what manner a just vengeance justly could be avenged has put thee upon thinking. But I will speedily thy mind unloose, and do thou listen, for these words of mine of a great doctrine will a present make thee. By not enduring on the power that wills, curb for his good, that man who ne'er was born, damning himself, damned all his progeny, whereby the human species down below lay sick for many centuries in great error, till to descend it pleased the word of God, to where the nature from which its own maker estranged itself, he joined to him person by the sole act of his eternal love. Now unto what is said direct thy sight, this nature when united to its maker, such as created was sincere and good, but by itself alone was banished forth from paradise, because it turned aside out of the way of truth and of its life. Therefore the penalty the cross held out, if measured by the nature thus assumed, none ever yet with so great justice stung, and none was ever of so great injustice, considering who the person was that suffered, within whom such a nature was contracted. From one act, therefore, issued things diverse. To God and to the Jews one death was pleasing. Earth trembled at it, and the heaven was opened. It should no longer now seem difficult to thee, when it is said that a just vengeance by a just court was afterward avenged. But now do I behold thy mind entangled, from thought to thought within a knot, from which with great desire it waits to free itself. Thou sayest, Well, discern I what I hear, but it is hidden from me why God willed for our redemption only this one mode. Buried remaineth, brother, this decree unto the eyes of every one whose nature is in the flame of love not yet adult. Verily, insomuch as at this mark one gazes long and little is discerned, wherefore this mode was worthiest, I will say, goodness divine from which itself doth spurn all envy, burning in itself so sparkles that the eternal beauties it unfolds. Whate'er from this immediately distills has afterwards no end, for ne'er removed is its impression when it sets its seal. Whate'er from this immediately rains down is wholly free, because it is not subject unto the influences of novel things. The more conformed thereto, the more it pleases, for the blessed ardor that irradiates all things, in that most like itself is most vivacious. With all of these things has advantaged been the human creature, and if one be wanting from his nobility, he needs must fall. Tis sin alone which doth disfranchise him, 
and render him unlike the good supreme, so that he little with its light is blanched. And to his dignity no more returns, unless he fill up where transgression empties, with righteous pains for criminal delights. Your nature, when it sinned so utterly in its own seed out of these dignities, even as out of paradise was driven, nor could itself recover if thou noticed with nicest subtlety by any way, except by passing one of these two fords. Either that God through clemency alone had pardon granted, or that man himself had satisfaction for his folly made. Fix now thine eye deep into the abyss of the eternal counsel, to my speech, as far as it may be fastened steadfastly. Man in his limitations had not power to satisfy, not having power to sink in his humility obeying then. Far as he disobeying thought to rise, and for this reason man has been from power of satisfying by himself excluded. Therefore it God behooved in his own ways man to restore unto his perfect life, I say in one or else in both of them. But since the action of the doer is so much more grateful, as it more presents the goodness of the heart from which it issues, goodness divine, that doth imprint the world, has been contented to proceed by each, and all its ways lift you up again. Nor twixt the first day and the final night such high and such magnificent proceeding by one or by the other was or shall be. For God more bounteous was himself to give, to make man able to uplift himself, than if he only of himself had pardoned. And all the other modes were insufficient for justice, were it not the Son of God himself had humble to become incarnate. Now to fill fully each desire of thine, return I to elucidate one place, in order that thou there mayest see as I do. Thou sayest, I see the air, I see the fire, the water and the earth and all their mixtures come to corruption, and short while endure, and these things notwithstanding were created. Therefore, if that which I have said were true, they should have been secure against corruption. The angels, brother, and the land sincere in which thou art created may be called just as they are in their entire existence. But all the elements which thou hast named, and all those things which out of them are made, by a created virtue are informed. Created was the matter which they have, created was the informing influence within these stars that round about them go. The soul of every brute and of the plants by its potential temperament attracts the ray and motion of the holy lights. But your own life immediately inspires supreme beneficence, and enamors it, so with herself it evermore desires her. And thou from this mayest argue furthermore your resurrection, if thou think again how human flesh was fashioned at that time, when the first parents, both of them, were made. End of Canto 7 Paradiso, Canto 8 The world used in its peril to believe that the fair Cypria delirious love rayed out in the third epicycle turning, Wherefore not only unto her paid honor of sacrifices and of votive cry the ancient nations in the ancient error, but both Dione honored they and Cupid that as her mother and this one as her son, and said that he had sat in Dido's lap, and they took from her whence I beginning take, took the denomination of the star that woos the sun now following, now in front. I was not ware of our ascending to it, but of our being in it gave full faith my lady whom I saw more beauteous grow and as within a flame a spark is seen, and as within a voice a voice discerned, when one is steadfast and one comes and goes, within that light beheld I other lamps move in a circle, speeding more and less, methinks in measure of their inward vision. From a cold cloud descended never winds, or visible or not so rapidly, they would not laggard and impeded seem. To any one who had those lights divine seen come towards us, leaving the gyration begin at first in the high seraphim, and behind those that most in front appeared, sounded Osana, so that never since to hear again was I without desire. Then unto us more nearly one approached, and it alone began, We all are ready unto thy pleasure, that thou joy in us. We turn around with the celestial princes, one gyre and one gyration and one thirst, in whom thou in the world of old didst say, Ye who intelligent the third heaven are moving, and are so full of love to pleasure thee, a little quiet will not be less sweet. After these eyes of mine themselves had offered unto my lady reverently, and she, content and certain of herself, had made them, back to the light they turned which so great promise made of itself, and say, Who art thou? was my voice imprinted with a great affection. Oh, how and how much I beheld it grow, with the new joy that superadded was unto its joys, 
as soon as I had spoken. Thus changed, it said to me, the world possessed me short time below, and if it had been more, much evil will be which would not have been. My gladness keepeth me concealed from thee, which rayeth round about me, and doth hide me, like as a creature swathed in its own silk. Much didst thou love me, and thou hadst good reason, for had I been below I should have shown thee somewhat beyond the foliage of my love. That left-hand margin which doth bathe itself in roan, when it is mingled with the sorg, me for its lord awaited in due time. And that horn of Ausonio, which is towned with body, with Gaeta and Catona, whence Tronto and Verde in the sea disgorge, already flashed upon my brow the crown of that dominion which the Danube waters after the German borders it abandons, and beautiful Trinacria that is murky, twixt Pratino and Peloro, on the gulf which greatest scathe from Joris doth receive. Not through Typhius, but through nascent sulphur, would have awaited her own monarch still, through me from Charles descended and from Rudolph. If evil lordship that exasperates ever the subject populations had not moved Palermo to the outcry of death, death, and if my brother could but this foresee the greedy poverty of Catalonia, straight would he flee that it might not molest him. For verily tis needful to provide, through him or other, so that on his bark already freighted no more freight be placed. His nature, which from liberal covetous descended, such a soldiery would need as should not care for hoarding in a chest. Because I do believe the lofty joy thy speech infuses into me, my lord, where every good thing doth begin and end. Thou seest as I see it, the more grateful is it to me, and this too hold I dear, that gazing upon God thou dost discern it. Glad hast thou made me, so make clear to me, since speaking thou hast stirred me up to doubt, how from sweet seed can bitter issue forth. This I to him, and he to me, if I can show to thee a truth, to what thou askest, thy face thou hold as thou dost hold thy back. The good which all the realm thou art ascending, turns and contents, maketh its providence to be a power unto these bodies vast. And not alone the natures are foreseen, within the mind that in itself is perfect, but they together with their preservation, for whatsoever thing this bow shoots forth, falls foreordained unto an end foreseen, even as a shaft directed to its mark. If that were not, the heaven which thou dost walk, would in such manner its effects produce, that they no longer would be arts, but ruins. This cannot be if the intelligences that keep these stars in motion are not maimed, and maimed the first that has not made them perfect. Wilt thou this truth have clearer made it to thee? And I, not so, for tis impossible, that nature tire, I see, in what is needful. Whence he again, now say, would it be worse for men on earth were they not citizens? Yes, I replied, and here I ask no reason. And can they be so, if below they live not diversely unto offices diverse? No, if your master writeth well for you. So came he with deductions to this point, then he concluded, Therefore it behooves the roots of your effects to be diverse. Hence one is Solonborn, another Cerses, another Melchizedek, and another he who flying through the air his son did lose. Revolving nature which a signet is to mortal wax, doth practice well her art, but not one in distinguished from another. Thence happens it that Esau differeth in seed from Jacob, and Quirinius comes from sire so vile that he is given to Mars. A generated nature its own way would always make like its progenitors, if providence divine were not triumphant. Now that which was behind thee is before thee, but that thou know that I with thee am pleased, with a corollary will I mantle thee. Evermore nature, if it fortune find discordant to it, like each other's seed out of its region maketh evil thrift. And if the world below would fix its mind on the foundation which is laid by nature, pursuing that, t'would have the people good. But you unto religion wrench aside him who was born to gird him with the sword, and make a king of him who is for sermons. Therefore your footsteps wander from the road. End of Canto 8 Paradiso, Canto 9 Beautiful Clements, after that thy Charles had me enlightened, he narrated to me the treacheries his seed should undergo but said, Be still, and let the years roll round, so I can only say that lamentation legitimate shall follow on your wrongs. And of that holy light the life already had to the sun which fills it turned again, as to that good for which each thing sufficeth. 
Ah, souls deceived and creatures impious, who from such good do turn away your hearts, directing upon vanity your foreheads. And now, behold, another of those splendors approached me, and its will to pleasure me it signified by brightening outwardly. The eyes of Beatrice that fastened were upon me as before of dear assent to my desire assurance gave to me. Ah, bring swift compensation to my wish, thou blessed spirit, I said, and give me proof that what I think in thee I can reflect. Whereat the light, that still was new to me, out of its depths, whence it before was singing, as one delighted to do good, continued, Within that region of the land depraved of Italy that lies between Rialto and fountainheads of Brenta and of Piava, rises a hill and mounts not very high, wherefrom descended formerly a torch that made upon that region great assault. Out of one root were born both I and it. Kunitsa was I called, and here I shine, because the splendor of the star o'ercame me. But gladly to myself the cause I pardon of my allotment, and it does not grieve me, which would perhaps seem strong unto your vulgar. Of this so luculent and precious jewel, which of our heaven is nearest unto me, great fame remained, and ere it die away, this hundredth year shall yet quintupled be. See if man ought to make him excellent, so that another life the first may leave. And thus thinks not the present multitude, shut in by a DJ and Taliamento, nor yet for being scourged is penitent. But soon twill be that Padia and the marsh will change the water that Vicenza bathes, because the folk are stubborn against duty. And where the Sile and Cagnano join, one lordeth it, and goes with lofty head, for catching whom e'en now the net is making. Feltro, moreover, of her impious pastor, shall weep the crime which shall so monstrous be, that for the like none ever entered Malta. Ample exceedingly would be the vat, that of the Ferrarese could hold the blood, and weary who should weigh it ounce by ounce, of which this courteous priest shall make a gift, to show himself a partisan, and such gifts will to the living of the land conform. Above us there are mirrors, thrones you call them, from which shines out on us God judicant, so that this utterance seems good to us. Here it was silent, and it had the semblance of being turned elsewhither, by the wheel on which it had entered as it was before. The other joy, already known to me, became a thing transplendent in my sight, as a fine ruby smitten by the sun. Through joy effulgence is acquired above, as here a smile, but down below the shade outwardly darkens, as the mind is sad. God seeth all things, and in him, blessed spirit, thy sight is, said I, so that never will of his can possibly from thee be hidden. Thy voice, then, that forever makes the heavens glad, with the singing of those holy fires which of their six wings make themselves a cowl. Wherefore does it not satisfy my longings? Indeed, I would not wait thy questioning if I in thee were as thou art in me. The greatest of the valleys where the water expands itself forthwith its words began, that sea accepted which the earth in garlands. Between discordant shores against the sun extends so far that it meridian makes where it was wont before to make the horizon. I was a dweller on that valley's shore, twixt Ebro and Magra, that with the journey short doth from the Tuscan part the Genoese, with the same sunset and the same sunrise nearly sit Bugia and the city whence I was, that with its blood once made the harbor hot. Focal that people called me, unto whom my name was known, and now with me this heaven imprints itself, as I did once with it. For more the daughter of Belus never burned, offending both Sicius and Creusa, than I so long as it became my locks, nor yet that Rodophian, who deluded was by Demophon, nor yet Alcides, when Aeoli he in his heart had locked. Yet here is no repenting, but we smile, not at the fault which comes not back to mind, but at the power which ordered and foresaw. Here we behold the art that doth adorn with such affection and the good discover whereby the world above turns that below. But that thou wholly satisfied mayst bear thy wishes hence, which in this sphere are born, still further to proceed behooveth me. Thou fain wouldst know who is within this light, that here beside me thus is scintillating, even as a sunbeam in the limpid water. Then know thou, that within there is at rest Rahab, and being to our order joined, with her in its supremest grade tis sealed. Into this heaven where ends the shadowy cone, cast by your world before all other souls, first of Christ's triumph was she taken up. Full meet it was to leave her in some heaven, even as a palm of the high victory which he acquired with one palm and the other. Because she favored the first glorious deed of Joshua upon the Holy Land, 
that little stirs the memory of the Pope. Thy city, which an offshoot is of him, who first upon his maker turned his back, and whose ambition is so sorely wept, brings forth and scatters the accursed flower, which both the sheep and lambs hath led astray, since it has turned the shepherd to a wolf. For this the evangel and the mighty doctors are derelict, and only the decretal so steady that it shows upon their margins. On this are Pope and Cardinal's intent. Their meditations reach not Nazareth, there where his pinions Gabriel unfolded, but Vatican and the other parts elect of Rome, which have a cemetery been unto the soldiery that followed Peter, shall soon be free from this adultery. End of Canto 9 Paradiso, Canto 10 Looking into his son with all the love which each of them eternally breathes forth, the primal and unutterable power, what air before the mind or eye revolves with so much order made, there can be none who this beholds without enjoying him. Lift up then, reader, to the lofty wheels, with me thy vision straight unto that part, where the one motion on the other strikes, and there begin to contemplate with joy that master's art, who in himself so loves it that never doth his eye depart therefrom. Behold how from that point goes branching off the oblique circle, which conveys the planets to satisfy the world that calls upon them. And if their pathway were not thus inflected, much virtue in the heavens would be in vain, and almost every power below here dead. If from the straight line distant more or less were the departure, much would wanting be above and underneath of mundane order. Remain now, reader, still upon thy bench, in thought pursuing that which is foretasted, if thou wouldst jocund be instead of weary. I have set before thee, henceforth feed thyself, for to itself diverteth all my care, that theme whereof I had been made the scribe. The greatest of the ministers of nature, who with the power of heaven the world imprints, and measures with his light the time for us, with that part which above is called to mind, conjoined along the spirals was revolving, where each time earlier he presents himself. And I was with him, but of the ascending I was not conscious, saving as a man of a first thought is conscious ere it come. And Beatrice, she who is seen to pass from good to better, and so suddenly, that not by time her action is expressed. How loosened in herself must she have been! And what is in the sun wherein I entered, apparent not by color but by light? I, though I call on genius, art, and practice, cannot so tell it could be imagined. Believe one can, and let him long to see it. And if our fantasies too lowly are for altitudes so great, it is no marvel since o'er the sun was never I could go. Such in this place was the fourth family of the High Father, who forever sates it, showing how he breathes forth and how begets. And Beatrice began, Give thanks, give thanks unto the Son of Angels, who to the sensible one has raised thee by his grace. Never was heart of mortal so disposed to worship, nor to give itself to God with all its gratitude was it so ready, as at those words did I myself become, and all my love was so absorbed in him that in oblivion Beatrice was eclipsed. Nor this displeased her, but she smiled at it, so that the splendor of her laughing eyes my single mind on many things divided. Lights many saw I, vivid and triumphant, make us a center and themselves a circle, more sweet in voice than luminous in aspect. Thus girt about the daughter of Latona we sometimes see, when pregnant is the air so that it holds the thread which makes her zone, Within the court of heaven, whence I return, are many jewels found, so fair and precious they cannot be transported from the realm. And of them was the singing of those lights, who takes not wings that he may fly up thither, the tidings thence may from the dumb await. As soon as singing thus those burning suns had round about us whirled themselves three times, like unto stars neighboring the steadfast poles, ladies they seemed, not from the dance released, but who stopped short, in silence, listening till they have gathered the new melody. And within one I heard beginning, when the radiance of grace by which is kindled true love, and which thereafter grows by loving, within thee multiplied is so resplendent that it conducts thee upward by that stair, where without reascending none descends. Who should deny the wine out of his vial, unto thy thirst in liberty were not except as water which descends not seaward? Fain wouldst thou know with what plants is enflowered, this garland that encircles with the light, the lady fair who makes thee strong for heaven. Of the lambs was I of the holy flock, which Dominic conducteth by a road, where well one fattens if he strayeth not. He who is nearest me on the right, my brother and master was, and he, Albertus, is of Cologne, I, Thomas of Aquinium. If thou of all the others wouldst be certain, 
Follow behind my speaking with thy sight, upward along the blessed garland turning. That next effulgence issues from the smile of Gratian, who assisted both the courts in such wise that it pleased in paradise. The other, which nearby adorns our choir, that Peter was, who, even as the poor widow, offered his treasure unto holy church. The fifth light, that among us is the fairest, breathes forth from such a love that all the world below is greedy to learn tidings of it. Within it is the lofty mind, where knowledge so deep was put, that if the true be true, to see so much there never rose a second. Thou seest next the luster of that taper, which in the flesh below looked most within the angelic nature and its ministry. Within that other little light is smiling, the advocate of the Christian centuries, out of whose rhetoric Augustine was furnished. Now if thou trainest thy mind's eye along with light to light pursuant of my praise, with thirst already of the eighth thou waitest. By seeing every good therein exalts the sainted soul, which the fallacious world makes manifest to him who listeneth well. The body whence t'was hunted forth is lying down in Childaro, and from martyrdom and banishment it came unto this peace. See farther onward flamed the burning breath of Isidore, of Beda, and of Richard, who was in contemplation more than man. This whence to me returneth thy regard, the light is of a spirit unto whom in his grave meditations death seemed slow. It is the light eternal of Sigir, who, reading lectures in the street of straw, did syllogize invidious verities. Then as a horologue that called us, what time the bride of God is rising up, with matins to her spouse that he may love her, wherein one part the other draws and urges, ting, ting, resounding with so sweet a note, that swells with love the spirit well disposed. Thus I beheld the glorious wheel move round, and render voice to voice in modulation, and sweetness that cannot be comprehended, excepting there where joy is made eternal. End of Canto 10 Paradiso, Canto 11 O oh, thou insensate care of mortal men, how inclusive are the syllogisms that make thee beat thy wings in downward flight! One after laws and one to aphorisms was going, and one following the priesthood, and one to reign by force or sophistry, and one in theft, and one in state affairs, one in the pleasures of the flesh involved wearied himself, one gave himself to ease. When I, from all these things emancipate with Beatrice above there in the heavens, with such exceeding glory was received. When each one had returned unto that point, within the circle where it was before, it stood as in a candlestick a candle. And from within the effulgence which it first had spoken unto me, I heard begin, smiling while it more luminous became. Even as I am kindled in its ray, so looking into the eternal light, the occasion of thy thoughts I apprehend. Thou doubtest, and wouldst have me to resift in language so extended and so open my speech that to thy sense it may be plain. Where just before I said, Where well one fattens, and where I said, There never rose a second, and here tis needful we distinguish well, the providence which governeth the world with counsel, wherein all created vision is vanquished ere it reach unto the bottom, so that towards her own beloved might go the bride of him, who uttering a loud cry espoused her with his consecrated blood self-confident, and unto him more faithful. Two princes did ordain in her behoof, which on this side and that might be her guide. The one was all seraphical in ardor, the other by his wisdom upon earth a splendor was of light cherubical. One will I speak of, for both is spoken. In praising one, whichever may be taken, because unto one end their labors were. Between Tupino and the stream that falls, down from the hill elect of the blessed Ubald, a fertile slope of lofty mountain hangs from which Perugia feels the cold and heat, through Porta Sole, and behind it weep Gualdo and Nocera their grievous yoke. From out that slope, there where it breaketh most its steepness, rose upon the world a sun, as this one does sometimes from out of the Ganges. Therefore let him who speaketh of that place say not Ascesi, for he will say little, but Orient, if he properly would speak. He was not yet far distant from his rising, before he had begun to make the earth some comfort from his mighty virtue feel. For he in youth his father's wrath incurred, for certain dame to whom, as unto death, the gate of pleasure no one doth unlock, and was before his spiritual court et coram patre unto her united. Then day by day more fervently he loved her. She, reft of her first husband, scorned, obscure, one thousand and one hundred years and more, waited without suitor till he came. Naught it availed to hear that with Amiclas, found her unmoved at sounding of his voice, 
he who struck terror into all the world. Naught it availed being constant and undaunted, so that when Mary still remained below, she mounted up with Christ upon the cross. But that too darkly I may not proceed, Francis in poverty for these two lovers, take thou henceforward in my speech diffuse. Their concord and their joyous semblances, the love, the wonder, and the sweet regard they made to be the cause of holy thoughts, so much so that the venerable Bernard first bared his feet, and after so great peace, ran, and in running thought himself too slow. O wealth unknown, O veritable good! Giles bears his feet, and bears his feet Sylvester, behind the bridegroom, so doth please the bride. Then goes his way that father and that master, he and his lady and that family, which now was girding on the humble cord. Nor cowardice of heart weighed down his brow, at being son of Peter Bernardone, nor for appearing marvelously scorned. But regally his hard determination to innocent he opened, and from him received the primal seal upon his order. After the people mendicant increased, behind this man whose admirable life better and glory of the heavens were sung, in coronated with a second crown, was through Honorius by the eternal spirit the holy purpose of this archimandrite. And when he had, through thirst of martyrdom, in the proud presence of the sultan preached, Christ and the others who came after him, and finding for conversion too unripe the folk, and not to tarry there in vain, returned to fruit of the Italic grass. On the rude rock twixt Tiber and the Arno, from Christ did he receive the final seal, which during two whole years his members bore, when he, who chose unto him so much good, was pleased to draw him up to the reward that he had merited by being lowly. Unto his friars, as to the rightful heirs, his most dear lady did he recommend, and bade that they should love her faithfully. And from her bosom the illustrious soul wished to depart, returning to its realm, and for its body wished no other beer. Think now what man was he, who was a fit companion over the high seas, to keep the bark of Peter to its proper bearings? And this man was our patriarch, hence whoever doth follow him as he commands can see that he is laden with good merchandise. But for new pasturage his flock has grown so greedy that it is impossible they be not scattered over fields diverse, and in proportion as his sheep remote and vagabond go farther off from him, more void of milk return they to the fold. Verily some there are that fear a hurt, and keep close to the shepherd, but so few that little cloth doth furnish forth their hoods. Now if my utterance be not indistinct, if thine own hearing hath attentive been, if thou recall to mind what I have said, in part contented shall thy wishes be, for thou shalt see the plant that's chipped away, and the rebuke that lieth in the words, where well one fattens, if he strayeth not. End of Canto 11 End of Paradiso, Canto 6 to Canto 11 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso. Canto 6 to Canto 11.